I always used to say to the non-Muslim lecturers and other people as well, who invented social policy? And they'd look at me in a bit of a confused way because they think they've invented it. I said, no, the first historical account of the development of a social policy infrastructure is in the Khalifa of Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu anhu. And I'd say this to them and they'd look at me in a confused way. What are you talking about? What is social policy? I'll give you an example. Who knows what child benefit is? Anyone know what child benefit is? Children's allowance? Every child gets benefit every week. For many families, bro, they keep them afloat. Isn't this a beautiful thing? Where did they get it from? Does anyone know where they got it from? Umar radiallahu an. Umar ibn al-Khattab. Umar radiallahu an. Again, he's patrolling his city. He hears a child crying. He goes to the woman. He says, why is your child crying? And then later on in the night, the child's still crying. And Umar radiallahu an came again. And he said, what an evil mother you are. All night your child's crying. Why did you look out for it? And he said, she didn't know this is Umar. She said, Amir al-Mu'minin Umar ibn al-Khattab has stipulated an allowance for those children who are weaned off. And I'm trying to wean my child off. And then Umar anhu asked how old her child was, she told him. And then, in the Fajr Salah, the major mention, Abdul Ahmad ibn Aouf mentioned, he said, I swear by Allah, Umar cried so much. Umar cried so much that we could not understand what he was reciting in the Fajr Salah. And then after the Fajr Salah, Umar turned around and Umar radiallahu said to himself, he said, woe unto you Umar, how many children have you killed due to this law of yours? And then he made the stipulate that every child in the Muslim world which was born would be given an allowance. Child benefit started with the Muslims. Umar started child benefit. Even in Ireland, I'm told in Ireland, brothers and sisters, she told me there, on the child benefit book in Ireland, it used to be written at the bottom, as was originally established by Umar ibn al-Khattab. Umar radiallahu anh, established the treasury, the Baytul Mal. And in his time, brothers, you cannot even imagine the wealth that came to the Muslims. Let me give you an example. The treasury was established when Abu Huraira radiallahu anh, he returned from Bahrain with 500,000 dirham. And the story goes, Umar radiallahu anhu said to Abu Huraira, how much did you bring back? 500,000 dirham. How much? 500,000 dirham. How much? He couldn't even believe this amount of money. I'll give you an idea of what currency was like at that time. Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu, his fortune was estimated at 50,000 dirham. 50,000. In that, the equivalent of him today would be multi-millionaire. Abu Bakr would have been considered as a multi-millionaire today. 50,000 dirham was his fortune. He spent it all in the service of Allah. He spent it all in the freeing of slaves, the saving of young girls who were being buried alive, and the support of the Prophet ﷺ. Multi-millionaire devoted his wealth to Islam. Now, Abu Huraira radiallahu anh has bought 500,000 dirham back. And there was no treasury system at the moment. To establish the Bayt al Mal. Anybody who could not work in the Muslim world was given an allowance. Omar is saying, he said, I swear by Allah, I will ensure that the Bedouins in the mountain of Sana will get their allowance. They will get their allowance. For Sayyidina Yahoo and other Sahaba who were blind, he actually had a kira. He had a care to look after his people. Umar anhu saw a group of Christians. SubhanAllah. They suffered from leprosy. Umar anhu took out wealth from the base of Mal. And he gave them. He spent on them to cure them. And those who could not be cured, Umar anhu spent on them until their final days. Umar once saw a Jewish man. He was, he was begging. And Umar radiallahu called the governor and he said, why is this man begging for? He said, all his life he's paid taxes, now he can't beg for himself, why is he begging? So in Islam we have the first occurrence when a bayt al-mal, i.e. a community chest, the collective fund was established. Then Umar radiallahu anh appointed officials for the administration of this so that it was given 
to children, to fuqara, those people whose needs were to widows, to orphans, to education, to health care, to looking after prisoners, so that the army also and the soldiers had a wage. This is what social policy is, brothers. No other, this, this is the first occurrence in history where we have. Before, yes, there was sadaqah. In the time of the Jews and the Christians, there was sadaqah. People gave charity and helped people in need. But there was no formal institution of collecting the money and then ensuring it is distributed to these various categories of people. And to give you an idea, so this was Abu Huraira who bought 500,000 dirham back from Bahrain. When the lands of Iraq had been conquered, 86 million dirham were collected from the lands of Iraq on an annual basis. In spite of all this, this was the personality of Sayyidina Umar Farooq radiya Allah ta'ala and Qatada relates. He relates, you know, on one occasion, he's late for Jummah. People are waiting in the congregation. You know, the congregations in the masjid waiting for the Amir al-Mu'mineen to leave the Jummah prayer. And it's time and the Amir al-Mu'mineen is not there. The Sahaba become anxious. Now all of a sudden rushing, the Amir al-Mu'mineen comes forward to the member and he apologizes. And what he says to the companions of Rasulullah and the believers, he apologizes and says, okay, my brothers, I'm sorry that I was delayed. The reason I was delayed is because I had washed my clothes. Listen very carefully to this, this is the Amir al-Mu'mineen. You know, Kisra, when his name would mention, would see nightmares, terrified. You know, these, these were the superpowers. And he's there washing his own clothes. And he says, I was waiting for this pair of clothes to dry. I had no clothes other than this. This is the Amir al-Mu'mineen. The Amir al-Mu'mineen. On one occasion, Zayd ibn Wahab says, I saw him in the market. And I looked at the garment that he was, he was wearing and he counted the patches on his garment. My young friend, he had 14 patches. 14 patches! This is the Amir al-Mu'mineen. I mean, just one narration comes to mind. On one occasion, Sayyidina Ali radiallahu ta'ala saw Sayyidina Umar Farooq radiallahu ta'ala running. And he asked, oh, Amir al-Mu'mineen, why are you running today? So Sayyidina Umar Farooq radiallahu ta'ala responded, the reason I'm running is because one of the camels of the public, public treasury has run away and I'm going to catch it, I'm going to find it. Sayyidina Ali said to Umar, Umar, you have tired the leaders that are, that are going to come after you. Meaning you have set such high standards that whoever becomes the Khalif or the Amir, they will never be able to compete with you or follow your example. It's too high. And he turned round, listen very carefully, my friends, he turned round and said to Sayyidina Umar, La salumni ya Abul Hassan. Abul Hassan was the Qunit and the title of Sayyidina Ali. He said, La salumni ya Abul Hassan. Oh Abul Hassan, don't blame me. Why? I swear by the one that I sent Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam with prophethood. If so much as a lamb was to fall inside the river, Umar will be responsible for it on the day of judgment. You know, if this was a concern Umar had for an animal, but for a lamb, that he felt that if a lamb was to die in the river, wander off on its own accord, fall inside the river and die, Umar would be responsible for it on the day of judgment. What do you think his concern was for the, for the general believers?